Oh, good. Just uh, finally recovered from the weekend. Uh, had yeah. a great one this weekend. So it's, it's finally great, recovering man. from. It's, it's been a great week of music and sports already, man. You know, we, yeah, our, buddy, our buddies, uh, Money and I, you know, Sixth Century, that was fun. Catching up with Brady yep. and Mark, yep. man. You know. Um, our buddy Richie stopped by today for him, fire from the gods. Love him. Mm-hmm. Um, I got a story for it. Cause it's kind of fitting for, uh, tonight's, uh, icon, the icon that'll be coming on. I was thinking Dan about my long lost first ant farm and how I had my favorite <laughs> ants. I had buddy and Holly and I had to, you know, one oh, day yeah. I came home and they were, they were belly up. Like, oh, they're not with us anymore. And I, you know, I had my, <laughs> my first two ants that were with me for like three weeks, you know, it was crazy. Oh man. To, man, that, it, man. That, yeah. That long, that long relationship you had with them. It, Sad awesome, to see it go, man. huh? And we have one of those, you know, it was like the big ones. It was glow in the dark. It was a real cool thing. It was just a really oh, yeah. good set, man. But what is long lasting and have been been rocking our faces yeah. off for years, man. Um, we got a, we got a, our buddy coming on tonight from Alien Ant Farm. We got Mike. And what's crazy about this, man? I remember when I was listening to Flesh and Bone. That was the first track when I was younger, a few years mm-hmm. ago. But I showed it to you, and we're like, this band is legit. And then all of a sudden, which is cool. Don't get me wrong. I love it when they drop Smooth Criminal. But it's cool, like going back and. Telling people when we were listening to music in the early 2000s, we had to buy the album. It was cool yeah. saying we knew about these guys before, like the certain tracks came out, like kind of a back in the day, right? Yeah. Now kids right. get on Spotify and they'll have this kid with like, who is this? Back in our day, you know, whether it was vinyl or CDs, it was cool yeah. to actually like show the tracks and all that. So yeah. I remember I was yeah. uh, I was skating with my buddies, fell off my skateboard. We were playing Smith coming on repeat and broke my elbow and it's been a whole summer <laughs> listening to him. It's crazy, you know? Oh, there you uh, go. But they were the they were the soundtrack of our summers, Dan. I know you, you know, uh, at all those bands. So uh, we've talked about this thing. The best music comes from the early '90s and early 2000s, and I, I stand behind oh, yeah. that. So, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, but let me quit fanboying out, Dan, and quit relishing <laughs> in the past, and uh, bring on our buddy Mike from the uh, Alien Farm. Mike, how you doing, my friend? Good. Thanks, guys, for having me. Um, pretty interesting listening to you <laughs> talk about that. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> it, it, it's all true man i thought i was going to be like a killer skateboarder you know i was doing my thing all those years of playing tony hawk i thought i could do it in real life and i'm bumping <laughs> you guys and this doesn't translate man you know so no you, but, you know it's funny that you say that because uh, just growing up skateboarding was like a big part of you know for all of us in the band and and a, a bunch of kids but um man i remember thinking i wanted to be like a pro skater and i was like all into you know when bones brigade and uh, you know animal chin and all that was coming out i was like in sixth seventh grade and yeah, I was having a good old time, and then and um, when it started getting pretty involved, and there was like some more like gnarly, you know, crazy, you know, stairs and rails and all that kind of stuff that w- that were going on, I was like, man, I think drums are a little safer. Like, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. You know? Keep it the well, broken bones, huh? Uh, well, even yeah. even a shorter even a shorter uh, lived life of uh, skateboarding was mine. I was on a skateboard. And I was about ten, and I fell off and broke my front two teeth and. At that point, I said, "This isn't for me." So, oh wow, I was short, very, very short lived. And that was my first skateboard I bought. It was about three weeks in. I was like, "Nope, this isn't for me." It was the last one. You know, <laughs> oddly <laughs> enough, I I broke my my front tooth. We we just got off tour one time, and I was just so just out of it. Like we had just come back in from I think overseas somewhere, and uh, and I fell asleep on my couch in my living room, and I got up. I thought I was like on a bus or something, and. Uh, I got up and I went to go to the bathroom, but I walked straight into this guitar rack that I had and I fell over and, and I busted my front tooth on the headstock of a oh, guitar man, in dude. my living room. Being a musician is <laughs> dangerous, bro. Now. Musicians are dangerous, are not life, safe. bro. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Well, dude, Mike, it's, I'm telling you, man, uh, from, from day one, and I, I like saying this, man, because when you guys started so young, you're still at, at your prime. And I just say it's seasoned now. You know, you're uh, thankfully you continue to make this great music. I'm excited for the next an album next year, which we'll get into, man. But we've got some questions over the years that our fans kind of cultivate that we're going to run past you. So I'm going to take the lead on this one and kind of jump into it. Obviously, before working with Dryden and Alien Ant Farm and all these stories, I'm sure there's always these bands yeah. out there, man. Before you doing this back in the day, even before you guys did this, there had to be some garage bands or maybe some original projects. Take me back to when it began. How old were you? Maybe your first gig or when you first started playing, you know? So, Okay. Well, um, you know, in fact, uh, I was in different bands with, with Dryden and with Terry um, mm-hmm. prior to being in Alien Ant Farm and with Ty. And also with Timmy, who's our current bass player. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, Dryden and I, we were first 
like I was playing in a garage band and I met him and he was he was coming over and like kind of watching us play. I remember he was like had some eyeliner on and stuff and I kind of was like, what's up with this guy? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I was I was pretty metal. You know what I mean? And um, but then we got to being like good friends and stuff. And then um, I had a band called Out of Order and uh, and Dryden joined that band. And um, and so we did that for a bit. And then I started or I got into a band with Terry. Um, we did a few little projects and I was in a band called brother vibe that we did kind of, we did some good stuff locally and all that. And, um, Dryden was in another band called, um, dragonfly. And so all these different, like, you know, bands and Ter Terry had another band in that, in the scene, you know, to where we were playing, um, like around 14 years old, I was going to this place called Spanky's here in Riverside. And, uh, there's like a documentary coming out about it and all that. And it was a pretty cool spot to see a bunch of underground and, and, popular bands you know that were coming out you know and um but not pop pop you know what i mean like punk rock gotcha. stuff and and hardcore and all this kind of cool stuff and um so all i really wanted to do is like man i want to go there and be able to play a show there in this like little cafe and and uh have all these people slamming and doing all this stuff you know i thought it was cool i was like just it was totally i'd never seen anything like it so um so then you know we started playing in bands and doing all this stuff and and uh so I played with with Dry. Dry came and played in Out of Order was our band, and we did that for a few years. And then um, we started, or again, Brother Vibe was already started, and then Terry joined it, and then I joined after that. And uh, mm -hmm. we did Brother Vibe for a few years. We put out a, a CD, a CD. That's and, awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And uh, so we did that, and uh, and then we started Ant Farm after that. And and I was playing in a Primus cover band with Ty. And Ty played bass and sang it, and he just nailed it. And um, so we did all that. And so we were, I was playing with all these different guys, you know, throughout the years. And um, and then right around, you know, I guess 94, 95 is when we started to um, get together and, and like form Ant Farm and, and start writing together with that right. unit, you know. And all I was playing in a different band with each member, you know, at the time. And so it was it was cool. So it'd be kind of cool, nice. Dan, before you take two, man. Like, think about this. If you, like, let's see you and Dry and, and like, you guys all, like, we could have this, you could have this whole tour where you're headlining all of your bands and just be you guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> have the Brother Bob come out and switch sets and all that. Yeah. You know? be kind of cool. Yeah. Well, and, you know, also just going back to with Timmy, too, it's like, you know, I played in a band um, called uh, Pretty Neato and another band called Mystery Schools with him. So we did that before, and he became a tech for Ant Farm. And then when Ty, um, took off then uh then timmy came and like joined the band since so that's what it's been so <laughs> a lot wow. of great products man and it's crazy yeah uh, Jay, dane, dane gets a kick out of the story i remember playing drums was the first thing i learned to play i think like you said this too everybody kind of always remembers their first kit like i remember my dad mm -hmm. when he got v session he's like stop playing you're annoying me i can't take anymore so he got me a rolling v session do you remember when you find like okay you got a little cash in your pocket what was your first baby kit like that's your baby what was it you know well, um, my, I, I, when I was, cause I had always like wanted to play and I'd kind of like think about it and want to get it. And my parents were like, no way. That's like way too loud. And you know, it's just crazy, you know? Yeah. And so, um, then finally around when I, when I was just turned 11, I wanted, I asked for it for Christmas and I didn't get it. And I kind of was like, you know, being all pouty and stuff. And, <laughs> you know, they're like, you know, how was your Christmas? And I'm like, it was good, I guess, you know, whatever, you know. <laughs> so I ended up getting a drum set. And from, you know, they kind of said, you know, what, what would you really want? And I'm like, you know, I've been asking, you know. So they finally got me that. And it was a, the brand was shock, you know. Yeah, and, um, yeah. And it was, uh, uh, it had four toms. So I thought it was really cool. You know what I mean? So I had like the four toms, single bass, and a floor tom. And uh, yeah, I just, I loved it. I mean, I didn't know what the hell to do with it yet. But, but it was just. <laughs> awesome you know i love it i love it man oh, yeah definitely <clears throat> go ahead Dan. now when you started with you know all the bands that you did with you know brother vibe and, and pretty neato and you started you know getting more confidence playing and you started playing you know shorter or smaller shows now from that point to where you are now are, are there some memories that you always carry with you maybe one or two gigs or events that you always stick out in the forefront of your mind that you can maybe share with us yeah, you know, um, I would say there was one show that we played. It, there used to be this festival down to, down in downtown Riverside here where we're from, and it was called the Orange Blossom Festival. And there was this one show. It felt like the 
this really cool point. I mean, we weren't, we were still just a local band, but we were starting to play, you know, out of state and doing stuff, you know, we were independent and we were doing stuff. And, and, uh, um, we played this festival and, and we played, you know, it was pretty big, you know, a lot of like, um, just national acts and stuff would come mm-hmm. in and play, but we played, you know, and, uh, we got a good slot and there was a big crowd and Dryden cause orange blossom festival is what it was. And Dryden painted himself all orange and dyed his hair green. And, and, um, and it was just like, kind of, it just was like, wow. It felt like you could see the crowd way out there, you know, and it just felt like we had done yeah. something really cool. And, see, um, see. so that was cool. And then, um, yeah, you know, um, I remember Brother Vibe. We played, we played this show with, um, it was like No Doubt and Sublime. Okay. And I want to say like the Skeletones. I think maybe Voodoo Glow Skulls too, which were kind of yeah. local Riverside bands. And then hmm. No Doubt was just about to really, really explode. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And Sublime too, you know. And and uh, we played this show here in Riverside and looking back i was like wow you know it was really like i was young and uh just to think you know we played that bill and it was a really cool like bigger thing it wasn't just like a local club or someone's backyard or some party getting broken up or something you know <laughs> so yeah so it was cool that's and that's man it's cool and as i transition to three like we talk about you know the guests we've had on we're real good friends with mikey from this band called islander and it's like funny how a lot of times i love asking these musicians the shows that you guys talk about, it's great to have the headliners and all that kind of stuff, but they're like these, like mentioned back to your hometown and all that's kind of cool to know what really like stood out to you. We also had a, a, a guy from uh, Jonathan Davis's band, Mike, and he was like, it was cool. These festivals he's played, but playing in front of his dad was like a big memory. So just the things that kind of, you know, hear what you guys say about what really, you know, stands out to you. It's really cool, man. And the yeah. scene that you're from, dude, you're seen it like everybody, not, not to, you walk around the town, people like yourself, yeah. it's just great musicians everywhere you go. It's like, it's like better than Nashville. You're seeing it where you're at, you know, in California. So I love it, man. Now, yeah. speaking of scene and influence and all that stuff, <clears> obviously <throat> the, the the influence. I did it first summer. You, you can you can ask my mom. Not that probably ever get this day, but when you guys, uh, I think it was right after you guys had dropped, kind of really went on your first headline tour. I thought I'd do my hair like Dryden one summer. Did the whole like part down the middle. Did the whole buzz thing. I thought it was cool. So I had this yeah. influence of like you guys and just the scene that you left on us, right? Yeah. Bands like yourself, even going back to some like the hoop sank stuff, then going to new metal, just the whole thing. The influence you left on us and continue to do, there's got to be a couple bands maybe on you. Uh, technically wise, maybe like a drummer or maybe a band. Who's left the biggest impression on you as an artist so far in your career, if you could pick one or two? Well, I mean, that's, <clears throat> again, that's such a hard, yeah. excuse me. You know, that, that's that's such a, I mean, to even try, obviously, but with that, I'm going to say it and preface it that way. I mean, for me, I, I Gosh, I don't know. I'll say like, you know, just I remember spending a lot of time um, listening to Sting, which caused me to listen to a lot of police and caused me to listen to a lot of Stuart Copeland, which, you gotcha. know, and 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 um, a lot of Vinnie Colaiuta. And so I think, you know, um, I would say that it was at a good point in my life about when I was 16, I would listen to because we listened to everything. We were so just curious about music and, you know, all the craziness and all the good stuff and whatever you know i was into yeah. everything so um I, but i think listening to sting and, and then you know just you know the police catalog and listening to all that stuff it really really had like a, a a great like general scope of a lot of different styles and, and yeah. a lot of energy too because you listen to a lot of that that early you know police stuff and there's a lot of raw energy in there so i right. like that kind of stuff but then there's a really really you know you know, pristine, you know, like elegant, perfect, you know, lovely, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, mm-hmm. like perfect sounding stuff too, you know, when you go into the, when you go, it's a pretty vast wide yeah. spectrum of a catalog. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, especially at that time and it's really like stuck with me. So that's like a great, I would say being there because it, it really visits a lot of different styles and encompasses a lot of different stuff. That way. So I hope that makes it's sense. true. Oh, it does. Yeah. And it, it, cause it Encompasses like you see a little bit of reggae elements, you see rock, you see ballads, you also see technical stuff. Stuart was yeah. the man back in the day. He's still great, man. But and I think like you guys and Vin, Vinny things. too. I'm sorry, yeah. real quick. Vinny, like seven days on um 10 Summoners Tales. 
that's like one of my favorite drum songs ever. And I, I think a lot of people have kind of cited that one, but I remember just especially, you know, going and like transcribing every, you know, note of every bar and every embellishment and all that stuff. So, I mean, that was like a really, really great record. So just like really fascinated me with, with Vinny Kaliuta from yeah. ever on, you know, out of that. So anyway, sorry. No, I think you're spot awesome. on. That's a drummer's drummer. Dan, we've heard that by so many of our, our friends yeah. that have to come on. And Vinny gets brought up a lot, man. It's like, yeah. it's neat to yeah. see how, but even though like some of these people like have influenced, your style is so different. If I set you next to, like I said, even if you look at you and compare to Stuart or like I said, our buddy from Demon Hunter or even like going to metal, even then, then you break that down to subcategories, even, even yeah. going into just country there's no drummer that's alike. It's like, yeah, it's so yeah. insane how your technique, your footwork, I was trying to explain that one time to my kid. It's like, there's no way to compare anybody to someone else. Yeah. It's just more about like who you're closer to. So I, I love it, man. Yeah. Um, man, go ahead, Dane. I, I could, I could talk about tech for days. Go ahead, Dane. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now that you guys have done so much, you guys played many a show and, and obviously you're like, we've always talked to a lot of the artists. They're always writing and doing something to, you know, perfect their craft. What is the next, you know, three to six months look like for you to wrap up the year and maybe going into 2024, what's kind of on the horizon for you as an artist and, and also for you guys as a band. Yeah. Well, um, we are happy to, you know, announce that we have just re or delivered our final new record, you know, to our label mm -hmm. mega force and uh, the head of our label, uh, Missy, you know, she, uh, she received it very well. And, and, uh, you know, better than we could have expected and and we we're just really happy and proud of this record it's taken a while to get out and um she was very patient with us you know because we started it before covid we were on tour you know we and we um well we started it went on tour came back and then covid hit so we'd done like four songs and then you know all that time that, that it took and that weird space that we were and uh it just took a while just to kind of actually finalize it and and get it just to get back on our feet to start recording again and I think, you know, we had a lot of stuff, kind of some, a lot, just the band personally, you know, everybody had like a lot of changes in their lives and, and just like, it was a a time for us where I'm glad, you know, we went through it and now I feel like better and, 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 uh, yeah, feel like the, the band's in a great place, like collectively. Yeah. And, and, um, and like I said, you know, getting this record done and finished and, uh, we just got into like a really, really good flow and working and, and, uh, and, uh, so I feel proud and, and happy of, of the music, you know, it, it just, it, I feel really like into it to where even, you know, I haven't really gone down and like, you know, played drums. I'm usually playing them because I'm recording or I'm, you know, we're rehearsing or we're getting ready for something or I need to like learn something, but just going down and playing for fun and all, you know, it's like, I kind of got into that headspace again and it's been, it's been great. So nice. I feel really good and like reinvigorated and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, and so, um, so that being said, you know, we delivered this record and um and so now we just got this artwork done by this um artist Tomo and it's it looks awesome and we're super stoked on it and uh and uh that, you know, it's like I said our buddy Lucas he mixed it, you know, and and then uh you know, it's all I don't know how it works anymore because before you don't want to put out a record before, you know, around the holidays and stuff like that cuz it's usually, you know, unless you're like I don't know, like Taylor Swift right now or someone, you know, putting out a Christmas record or something like you don't really stand a chance, you know, but it's a different landscape. And so I don't know how it all works, you know, these days. And so it should be, you know, beginning of uh, 2024 that we release the record, Love it. you know. All right. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And we're going to start you touring, you know, on that. I wanted to say, too, we're, we're going to start touring, you know, even more like we're really ramping up into it. So everybody's like excited and ready to go. And uh, we have one show that we're doing um, October 14th in Chile. We're doing um, Millennia Festival, I believe it is. And uh, nice. so we're doing that. And then it's just a one off and we'll be back. So that's that's kind of what we have so far. I love it, man. I think I, I saw you pull someone on IG, but I wanted to like have you say it was cool. I was like, okay, yeah. maybe we'll talk about the release. I was like, and Dane, thank you for bringing that up, Dane. And <laughs> you, you said something, man. I made a note, man, uh, Mike, and it was like, artists these days, in some ways, it's like, I call it sleeper cells of music. Like, okay, take, take us that love your band. And it's cool now with the way you do it digitally now. Kids, maybe before you spoke about records and CDs. I think it's the best way now. Like now, a whole new generation is coming on listening to your music. Me and Dan were talking about this, Mike. Like we love you, and it's cool that you're still 
in your prime rocking it putting new music out and now we get to pass this on and listen to it with our kids yeah. you know 10 years ago my kid wouldn't have went and bought a cd she wouldn't have done that but now i can say hey i have the vinyl i have your guys' tangible stuff i can show it to her on spotify or on apple music and it's like check this out you're reciprocating great music yeah. like you guys do to the next generation and just it's it's a uh, it's generational I think about when yeah. we were younger, Dane and I talked about this and bands like yourself. And then we go back to the nineties when it's no doubt or Alice in Chains or some of the greats. Now you guys are doing that same thing. You're taking it and you're passing it on the next generation. Yeah. That's gotta be a good feeling, man. So I hope you know how awesome it is of what you guys basically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, that's, it's pretty, it's flattering and, and thank you. And it's crazy to be in this place like right now. And it's, it's exciting all, all that all at once, you know? So it's, it's yeah. cool. Thank you. It, it's awesome. So I, I don't want to fanboy on that, but it's like, again, you just got, you got the, you got the people that are, we're, we're parenting these kids and trying to teach them good music, what we guys produce. And then now our kids are now reciprocating yeah. it. So we, a lot of your stuff gets played our practices and things like that, which is kind of cool to see that. No, rotate you know, through. I, I dig that, you know, we're, we're a big fan. You know, my daughter studied music for, you know, and did a lot of cool stuff and, you know, kids, you know, I, I taught for a long time and, and, uh, and so like, you know, just getting kids at, you know, just into or inspiring a little bit or if they just enjoy listening to it or whatever it is yep. you know, that's cool i love it cool man next generation yeah. so there's a segment they and i always laugh about this so mike this own part i won't give you prep for even when i was texting you kind of walking through this there's a little segment our fans are awesome we do a little thing called rapid fire now it's pg but we're about to get weird we love getting weird okay so um, <laughs> okay. now they, what me and dane do we bet on these questions uh we bet on what we think you're gonna say so you're actually you're being betted on bro and the winner <laughs> gets lunch provided by the loser so i got a pretty good track record okay. dane you owe me like 45 lunches dane so anyway yeah, dane. dane you got your picks on this yeah thing? yeah i'm ready Dang, so the, the, the comeback starts tonight, Mike. It so does. You got to help me out. Okay. Man. Okay. <laughs> so, Mike, here's how this goes, Mike. These five questions. Imagine. Let's go. Time, right. <laughs> so, imagine time doesn't exist. You're in your prime. You're in your 20s. Your body is super strong. What? I'm just kidding. So, all these things, time doesn't exist, past or present. So, first question. We're gonna go back to uh, 1986 as Michael Jackson's taken off and getting his career established. And we're gonna flip this completely around. He discovers, um, you guys are like juggernauts in the 80s doing your thing. And somehow your first album was made in 1984. Same song, but it's made in 84. He comes up to you guys and says, hey, I wanna cover one of your songs. I wanna either cover Flesh and Bone or Whisper. What song do you want Michael Jackson to cover for you guys? Flipping the script. Out of those two songs? Yeah, those two. Um, I would have to say, uh, it would have to be Flesh and Bone. Let's go. Let's go. Because, I had it. Uh, yeah, Flesh and Bone. Dane, did you have that one? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking about like, we were like, man, we were looking at Rapid Fire and someone said that like, that's a crazy question. Flip the script. You come up and wants to cover yeah. one of you guys. So I had you for that one. That's <laughs> that awesome. That's good. Dude. I would yeah. say Flesh and Bone. Love sure. it. Next one, speaking a little bit of skateboard stuff, man, we were talking about that a little bit earlier. So we're going to transport back to 1995. Somehow this is happening. And you guys, you are going to be a, a character in one of these two iconic skateboarding video game franchises. Check this out. You can be the little 8-bit guy in Skate or Die, or you can be <laughs> one of the playable characters in Tony Hawk. Which one are you going with? I'm going with the Tony Hawk one. Go. I, I like the Tony Hawk. The, 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 the skate, skate or die, I liked it, but I was I was never good at it. So I got you. <laughs> it, not 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 Tony Hawk either, but I was good at watching it. I got you. Yeah, Dave, you which go. one did you have, man? Did you have Tony, oh, Tony Hawk? Oh, yeah, Tony Hawk, man. He's an icon, man. I actually, man, I had you, Mike, for Skate or Die. I could just like the rad thing because you're a rad uh, dude. Yeah. It's all good. No, you're a rad dude. <laughs> what, was, what was what was the other uh, video game that they had that had the joystick that went all the way around and the button and like 720, 720, there, 720 that's yeah. right there was 720 and there was also remember the the tnc skate surf and skate mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's crazy there, there, was, there was a nintendo one the, the tnc one man that one was just crazy it was like the joe cool would be on the skateboard and then um and you know what sucked <laughs> about that let me just go on this real quick i got a fudging you would go and, and say like you know okay you, you but if you got, because it's the same, um, it got a little bit more difficult, you know, they put a little more obstacles in there, but um, it was the same course, you know, so it was Nintendo. And and then it, there was like some like rumors that if it, if you went to like, if you did it 50 times, 
then a half pipe would open up and he would be on the half pipe and we were just like you know just trying like, oh i got to 48 and it's like and then now and then it never was so we're, after that you're just like going, okay well you know, yeah forget this again. yeah forget this <laughs> that's funny dude that was a total made-up rumor dude that was before we had cheat codes and stuff that's funny yeah <laughs> that's, that's awesome so i didn't like more, that <laughs> i love it man a couple more so next one um you guys are uh, going back to do a tour in the 80s and you're asked to support there's you're, you're asked to co-headline let me clarify you guys are doing your thing for some reason a lot of 80s questions tonight so you get a chance to co-headline either billy idol or flock of seagulls as Alien Ant Farm, which one do you guys go headline it with? Oh, Billy Idol, Idol all day. Let's go. Dan, <laughs> yeah, I'm killing it, Dane. Did you have that one, Dane? Oh, yeah. Go, go ahead, Mike. Billy. We played, we played a um, festival with them one time, and, and uh, or he was playing oh, wow. too. Um, yeah, we were all stoked. It was like right when Steve Stevens just joined the band again, the guitar player, and so we were stoked to see that. Anyhow, that's awesome, man. Yeah. That's Still awesome. Yeah. No, you're good. No, no, no rush, man. I just, I love to hear what you're saying. So, got two more of these. So, last two. Obviously, I know ants are a theme in the band and all that, but uh, they ask you, um, you're doing a festival, um, Halloween type stuff. Um, all of you guys are asked to dress up as one of these two comic book franchises for the gig. Classic to say yes, Ant Man or Batman, though. Which one would you like to go as? for the gig uh, Batman I, I'm such yeah. a big Batman fan I mean if if anybody knows me even a little bit I'm I'm a super Batman fan so let's go Dane we had a whole we had a whole episode Mike I will tell you and I hope this yep. doesn't make us not be friends but there's a difference <laughs> between being there's a difference between uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman I think that's its own argument there's two different things the best Bruce Wayne yep. the best Batman so now I gotta ask you real quick I have to do this in my yep. opinion and I want to hear yours I, I think the best Batman forgive me is Pattinson and the best Bruce Wayne is Bale. What is, what is your pick? This is just a bonus question. So I'll go with you on on Bale for Bruce Wayne. Um, Batman, gosh, it, see, this is the it, this is the hard part. Is that growing up, you know, with the sixties, watching? I wasn't born in the sixties, but I mean, uh, watching was, the though. reruns <laughs> as a kid. <laughs> the Adam West was like just kind of like what got me into it. So that was my favorite oh, yeah. Batman. You know what I mean? Okay. So That's cool. Um, but but reading the comics and all that stuff, you know, the Pattinson, you know, w was really good. And um, and again, Christian Bale, like like that that um, that version of you know the Nolan Batman yeah. series, mm -hmm. I really really liked that a lot. I yeah. got you know yeah. the the first the just the um, Tim Burton stuff. I mean, I remember going in '89, going to the, uh, yeah. for, you know, Michael Keaton um, Batman. We went and at midnight to go and see it, you know, and like waited in line, you know, super long, and and we were so into it, you know. I, I was like super into the comics at that time. I think I was like in the eighth grade, you know, and going in the awesome. ninth grade, and, and I was all into skating and, and mm. comics and you know and music, you know. That was kind of my whole yeah. thing, your whole world, you know. Yeah. And um, and so um. I remember like getting like the newspaper clippings and stuff or, or some like my, my grandparents would give me and it'd be just like kind of when they're filming the movie in London, you'd see like some kind of stuff of them, you know, behind the scenes and just like when Michael Keaton, like they first showed like the the version of the bat suit and him in and I was like, oh, what? Like, this is crazy, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I, I was super into all, all right. that. And uh, so I, I liked that too. But, you know, after you're really into the comics, the hard part is it's such a brief, you know, like, like it just like skims the surface where you're like, man, I need to go into this and this oh, yeah. part and that part and awesome. all that. So it's hard well, to watch sometimes too as a fan. Well, Mike, <laughs> there, there's no wrong answer. We already loved it now. Like, honestly, because Batman's my favorite character of all time and all, all mythology of anything. So I, now, as I, I already loved you enough, now it's like, dude, okay, now you're really cool. So, <laughs> you're oh, you know cool. what? You know what's really cool too is I just been, um, that Target, the McFarlane um, Batman 60s collection right now. Yeah. I've got like everything pretty much up to date right now. It's like, uh, it's uh, like the Wayne Manor and in like the, the villain's lair and all that stuff. <laughs> and I got the Bat Cycle and just, it's pretty cool. Whatever. I try, <laughs> I try to, I try, no, it's good, man. Trust me. We're on your time. I try to get my wife to let me just fill the baseball with bats since she didn't like that. So, <laughs> so uh. no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> No, man, so, so one more of the rapid, man. It's awesome. So last rapid. So again, I, I understand the 80s theme, so this one's going to crack me up. So um, they're, they're going to take 
your body of work from all your various bands, right? Which you guys have done with all of your projects. And and for whatever reason, they're going to make a Broadway musical out of it. So your entire catalog of music is going to be a musical. And they said, hey, your character, they, you, you can pick one of these two actors to be your your character, your muse, in the Alien Ant Farm musical. Um, would you like to have either A, <laughs> <laughs> would you like to have either A, Tom Cruise play you, or B, Seth Rogen play you in your Alien Ant Farm musical? Who are you going with? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, see, uh, Tom Cruise is like, a pretty intense actor and he could do some rad stuff he'd probably learn how to play the drums really good to do it you know what i mean yeah. so, um not that i play the drums really good i'm just saying for an actor you know, no you do to, to <laughs> you take do. on the role to, to immerse himself but i i think that um i think seth seth rogan is like way more the, the type of person that i, I am you know <laughs> so got you i um, got I'll you say, I'll say Seth Rogen. No, 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 no. Actually, I would say, I would say, yeah, Seth Rogen. Okay, <laughs> got you, man. Dan, did you have Seth? I, I, I no, I had, I had Tom Cruise. Yeah, you're very uh, dapper, Mike. So I had you for Tom Cruise. Man. Oh yeah, <laughs> so, oh. love it. I love it, man. You got you got a little mix of you know you know got, got that dapper thing, but you also have the humor of Seth Rogen. So it's all good. Well, hopefully, Mike, <laughs> yeah. in, in, in segments that you've done, man. Hopefully, haven't had a segment like that. We appreciate you being a good sport. So no, no cool. but, it was yeah. fun. Love it. That's rapid fire. So I'll give it back to Dane for the final <clears throat> site. So yeah, on on this last segment, Mike, we call it a uh, open mic segment. You know, you talked about you know teaching and and you know passing things on to the next generation is is kind of something we're all about on our show. Is there maybe a philosophy or a mantra or something you know that you've learned through the years that you maybe want to pass on to this next generation? Maybe something to help them keep going and mm -hmm. to perfect their craft like you have. Uh, oh, I, I, yeah, I'm still in pursuit of that. But um, yeah. funny enough, you said mantras because that's the title of our our record coming out. So that we just finished. Oh. So, um, and you know, I would say it, when 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 you were asking, were you asking, you know, specifically to music or just to anything in general that you may? Well, I mean, if it's a you know a young artist or any, or anybody that's pursuing their dream. Maybe uh, uh, something okay. something that they can do to you know help get them through a tough time or keep them mm -hmm. going in in a positive way. If it's like sports or I mean anything could be you know what I mean. Um, mm -hmm. But like I would just you know I find a lot of like inspiration and in just like you know reading about people that you know it doesn't even have to be you know music it could be you know I mean they don't even have to be the best person particularly but just kind of <laughs> like people's will to like kind of just really go and get the things that they that they yeah you know imagine themselves getting you know what i mean like just yeah. you know putting yourself out there there's a lot of times you kind of might embarrass yourself or kind of not mm -hmm. be ready to even be chosen to do stuff mm -hmm. but you got to kind of get in there and and uh and just kind of get your feet wet and and feel like just like kind of like what it's like to even feel it blow by you you know what i mean yeah. and, and yeah. feel the the wind in your face you know what i mean and then yeah. go okay like I, okay i'm gonna step back a little bit and get myself a little bit more ready you know to be self-aware that way i think is important as well i think to also you know have a, a strong belief in yourself because a lot of people you know if you're trying to do and again it, it applies to anything that you're trying to do um you know that a lot of people are gonna you know make you feel kind of silly you know what i mean just because down, you know, if yeah. anything's worth worth like wanting to do, you know, usually it, it requires you know some, I guess, discipline and 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 uh, and trying hard and failing a lot. You know, you hear all mm -hmm. that stuff and it sounds corny and and repetitive, but it's the honest truth. You know, anything yeah. that I've ever tried to do, you know, from skateboarding to to uh, like what I remember, like going and and getting you know VHS, you know tapes and you know you'd slow it down and stop and just look at footwork and just you know things that they were doing you know every little thing you have so much information out there it's almost like overwhelming yeah and it's almost like a little bit will kind of put you off everybody's so awesome at what they're doing here you know what i mean like why would i even bother to try it's already been done yeah. a million times faster and better and younger and you know and and <laughs> just like and it's just just you know it, it, there's all of that but you know you can't you can't really 
and, and like you were saying, you know, earlier, just, you know, how different drummers have their own, you know, style and there's not mm-hmm. it's kind of pointless to compare them. And again, you, there's certain things you could say you prefer and all that kind of stuff, you know, right. but other than that, you know, you can, you know, if, if you've tried anything, you know, what, what it takes to be good at, at anything or yeah. even just a little bit. So, yeah. so you start to have a, a greater respect, the more that you involve or invest into whatever it is you're trying to do. So I, <laughs> I find that same inspiration when I see somebody doing something really, really good. I mean, I remember watching, you're talking about skateboarding, watching that, uh, that Wellander, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like yeah. little documentary and, and him just doing all that stuff. I was like, oh God, it's just crazy you know like doing stuff like before it was really being done and you know what i mean and everything is crazier yeah, now it is, yeah but i mean just and that's like with anything you know I, I see like you know crazy drummers and different videos you know online and i'm just going wow you know what i mean i remember you know having to go to a music store and maybe i could find like you know used you know vhs tapes of like these starlicks you know where you'd watch like different drummers even drummers yeah. you're really into but at least mm-hmm. they could teach you something you know yeah. what i mean you would learn little things and, and it'd be all like bad quality and all that but i mean you just <laughs> whatever it is that you're into and you're willing to go and do and, and take away from i mean i think that's healthy and yeah. and again even if even if you ask questions about from somebody that's just like kind of you're bothering at least you're asking you know kind of like yeah. just be proud of yourself to be asking questions and trying yeah even if you kind of annoying people you know what i mean Mm-hmm. That's good, man. I'm thinking about Mike. What you're because I made a bunch of notes. I made I made some notes. What you're saying. I think you're saying <laughs> you're, you're you're saying like it's because we always do this, man. I think what you're saying is whether it's a musician, whether it's an artist, uh, whether it's a you know athlete. Because we do a lot of both. And Dane and I say this a lot. Um, I think what you're saying is sometimes it's more important to be available than to be able. Even though you're a great drummer, sometimes being available is like a bigger thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, like I can be there at that gig in 20 minutes. Cool. And a lot yeah. of times the first person that gets there gets the gig, right? I remember a buddy telling a story like that from uh, from Love and Death. He's like, I'm just ready to go. So like that's yeah. part of it too. Like you're there, you're giving yourself the bit, you're putting yourself out there. I'm yeah. ready to go. What, what do you need me for? So my, I think Mike is saying that so eloquently that sometimes it's yeah. not just about being the best. And again, you're great, but it's like being available. Dane, would you maybe yeah. agree? Or yeah. On that? yeah. I mean, I, I like what you said. Be proud of yourself. You're just asking questions. I mean, you, you're, you're not going to know what you can achieve if you don't, you know, go out and ask those who are great at something, you know, pick their brain, see what they know. And everybody, like we've always said, and we've, we've seen for our show here is they're always willing to give you something from themselves and teach you something. So just go out there and ask. And, you know, if you ask enough questions, you'll get all the answers you need. You're, you're, you're spot on with that. And I was going to say too, you know, just to kind of embellish that is that, you know, being on the other end, you know, when you know, it kind of takes one to know one in the sense that um, when somebody is asking you kind of those questions that you know that you were a little bit timid to to ask mm-hmm. or or kind of to have like the guts to get up there because you see, might have other friends too that just have all the confidence in the world. And you're like, oh my mm-hmm. god, this guy can't believe he, he do that. Like, doesn't <laughs> yeah. he know? Like, you know, or something like that. You know. Yeah. And so there's that. You know, so there's a kind of modesty and and all. That, you know, but um. You know, when you get next to people and you try to read the right time, you know, like you went like when they even ask a question, you know, and, and it's like, you know, and but people, you know, they they might come across as like a little bit abrasive and, you know, but then all of a sudden, if you're really asking the right stuff and they could see that you're really trying to learn something, people will bring you into, you know, yeah. under their arm yeah. or, or wing and 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 uh, and they'll they'll like that. And I know that from my end, you know, having people younger and, and that I've worked with and stuff and when they're asking the right questions like i'm curious to to see what i can give to them to see them you know grow and 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 do something great you know what i mean because i love seeing that that potential and that that kind of determination and that light in them you know what i mean so so it's it's fun and and you you should want to pass that on you know and uh and and again it's i mean if you really love this thing and you and and it makes you feel good it it makes you feel good to see other people do it too you know so man I wow. think Mike and Dane, you could probably say this, Dane. Mike, I kid you not. We're probably around episode 200. And I know you guys, like, there's no way all of you know each other, all of you. But in some way, it's like in your DNA. A musician like yourself, yeah. everyone we've talked to always says, if you love it, you're going to stick with it. And you're going yeah. you're gonna, to you're gonna keep doing it. And uh, like you talked about failure, even though we see the, the juggernaut that you are and honestly the, the, the following you've created, 
I'm sure there were some lonely nights, man. Maybe there's some times when the gigs weren't the way you wanted them to go, or maybe the crowd wasn't what yeah. you wanted. And now you get to do this. Like you said, it took, I, I made a specific note of this, Mike. It took you guys a few years to get a record out. You didn't have to do it. You did it because you want to, not because you have yeah. to. How, how cool is that, Mike? You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I'll, I'll definitely, you know, agree. And, and this one, I'm, I'm telling you, this was a very, this was a labor of love. And, and, uh, and there was a lot of stuff that we got through personally. And, you know, it's like some middle age, I mean, <laughs> but I mean, but it, it's just where we are. And there, there's like just some, some things that we had to grow through. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, you kind of you get to this point, you don't know what you're supposed to do, just write a song about something that you're supposed to write a song about, or just to kind of like write what you're feeling. I mean, we wrote like a lot of stuff, we were honest with, you know, a lot of Dryden writes most of the lyrics, you know, but a lot of the themes were like love songs and kind of like breakup songs and stuff, you know, and, and there was a lot of stuff that happened within this time. That's why it probably, it, sometimes it gets a little scary to want to like really visit your feelings, you know, especially, you know, when you get older, you're like, I'm not supposed to be feeling all emo right now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, too, I'm too old for this, you know, but, um, no, okay. but you know, th there's, there's some really cool stuff. I think that we, we took the time to kind of, um, kind of just unravel and, and 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 get to a point to where it just felt right and and uh again i'm super happy ab about you know kind of what it took not what it took but just kind of getting through it and having the music actually be this like therapeutic like kind of like healing thing you know because there was points mm -hmm. in it where it just seemed like it was never going to get finished we were never going to like just you know we were kind of in weird places personally and, and as mm -hmm. a band and and uh and it all feels again you know it feels everything feels really really good now so but uh but yeah we came through some some little valleys you know and uh and it feels good and, and it really it really does feel like healing and like the it's i i couldn't have asked for anything else to help me out of that kind of like little rut that i felt in you know yeah and it's it's dana always say this the osmosis and uh i love it that uh Obviously, what you guys dealt with maybe a few years back is it's it's not it's refreshing, man. Again, I, I say this over and over again. I'm sorry for repeating it, but it's good to know that our heroes are real people too. You're like, yeah, yes. I, I I I'm glad to know that maybe you wrote a song. I'm, I'm glad you're through it, but it gives me peace of mind knowing that our heroes have to put on two boots too, just like we do. You know, stuff like yeah. that. So you're going through stuff that we went through. Oh, well, you know, or so someone has that's listening. If it wasn't me or Dane personally, somebody has. Uh, that helps. It's actually better than like, yeah, you could probably make all anthems and all that, all party songs, but that's not where you are in life right now. Neither is maybe a part yeah. of your fan base either. So you guys are kind of evolving with your fan base and, yeah. and kind of talking real what they need to hear. They don't need to hear the same maybe college song. They need to hear something like what you guys are doing. And you're being yeah. the leader of opening up your feelings. And we, we appreciate you doing that. So, yeah, wow. Definitely. Sorry, Mike. I'll, I'll go on for days, Mike. My bad, man. No, that's <laughs> great. I, I appreciate that. And and just to be, be clear, we love, you know, party songs and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And, and metal and you know again yeah. we're, we we are fans of everything so <laughs> love it Dane, do you have anything because uh, we could talk mics are up all night Dane, anything to add to that man I'm no just, i've just uh, uh taking it all in taking notes and and i got a two or three pages full of them and i just i yeah. just can't wait to hear you guys' new album and and you know uh oh you always you always go through these things you think man i'm a fan but then after you're done you're even a Biggest bigger fan because you have a little bit more insight to what you guys do and why you do it. So I, I enjoy the conversation. I think I can't thank you enough for coming on with us. Yeah. Well, well thank you. And um, I'll have to send you guys some, some music. You guys can check it out and see what you, you think. We, we will. As soon as you give me the permission, I'm like a junkyard dog. Once you give me permission, I'll share it. <laughs> and I'll, I am. Dan knows this. Um, are you guys cool. last question, man? Kind of, part d were you guys gonna do vinyl i know vinyl's hot but you talked about having an artist you guys gonna do any vinyl you think um with ups um yeah we're definitely looking to do vinyl um we want to oh. do it for all of our past you know um records Good. too um we actually were looking into doing it and just it's just, there was like a big waiting list so it was like nine months out or something like gotcha. that before you could even really think about pressing but i think as this one comes it's kind of like kind of caught up so but yes the answer is yes Awesome, man. Well, Mike, uh, again, please let it be known. Open invitation. Uh, alum, once you give me the permission, I'll share the new stuff. Come back anytime. Please let it be the first yep. of many. And thank you again for being even cooler than we <laughs> thought you were. Even cooler, man. So I appreciate it, okay? Yeah. So, yeah, thank you. Well, thank you, guys. I appreciate it. It was fun. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in touch, man. Have a good one, okay? Take care, right. brother. Thank you. Cool. Peace. Yep. So, man, I'm telling you, Dane, like, they say, I say this a lot, but don't meet your heroes, but I'm glad I did, dude. Wasn't he just freaking awesome? Like, what do you say yeah, about I mean, that? Yeah, you can't say enough. The stories he tells, I mean, 
how relaxed he is and you know the things they write from you or the things they write you can tell that comes from a deeper place you know and i and like i say i can't wait to hear the new stuff so i'm excited man now now i, I want to go to we, bed yeah we don't get <laughs> we don't get very uh you and me we we know how to talk we could talk for hours but i'm like yeah I just wanted to keep going. And I was like, feel bad for him. Cause like, okay, I know he's got things to do. You know, he's got yeah, kids yeah. or whatever. <laughs> like, I just want to sit there and chat with this guy all night long, but like, yeah. man, he's so fascinating, you know? Cause think about that Dame. Again, I, I joke with you a lot, but you know, we're, we're only a few years apart. I know you are my uncle, but there's not even 10 years apart. So you are in the same musical sphere as me. These guys, you know, Hoobastain, Hender, early on yeah. Nickelback, um, some 41, um, you know, all this kind of, anthem rock stuff edema mm -hmm. early papa roach these guys are all from yeah. that movement you know right when really like new metal took off and they're kind of the the kind of like the godfathers of it if you will like they made this movement mm -hmm. and now they're like what would we do with this movement because what we were mad about in our 20s like we're not mad anymore like that you know yeah. so yeah like you said you're finding new things to write about you know yeah so. and, and you know some people say oh they're reinventing themselves like no they're evolving and, and making yeah. better things and and they know their fan base and because like you said, you know, you don't always want to make the party songs. You, there's something much deeper to you. But he said, we can still do that, but this is where the album took us. So yeah, it's great cool. to see band, bands and people evolve and and you grow with them. So it's pretty much a, like like we say, it's an insight to what's what they're going through in life. So that's always yeah. a great music to listen to. I mean, like, you know, again, um, don't get me wrong. I love all the hooks and anthems and all that, but it's also nice yeah. to have that like, okay, a little more meaningful stuff too. So um, it's definitely cool to see the evolution um, and their style. I challenge you guys. Um, one thing, I'm, if there's ever a thing that gets my goat, if I could say that, I'm not a big fan of listening to one or two songs. I like to listen to their catalog. Yeah. That's just me, something personal I do. Yeah. And they have such, man, they're so talented, guys. And you know, you'll know, you hear those people like, oh, they're the ones that sang this song. Yeah, and they also sang this, this, and this song, right? Go listen yeah. to all of it. Um, and now, you got to have those hooks that draw people in. I, I get it. I get the marketing yeah. for that. But the catalog is deep, and they have a lot of good music. And he spoke about the scene, Dane. Think about, like, even the OC scene, the, the like the Riverside scene, all of that, freaking no doubt. I mean, Sublime, yeah. they're in that group. They're all from that scene and where music was just fantastic, yeah. you know? So, yeah, and, and um, it's kind of where they all started and got their roots and and they just all man. exploded. The, and, you know, we're, we're the recipients of their greatness. I kind of think about this, Dane, as we try to close it, because I'm just kind of amped up from that one. You think about how we're we're in Kansas and we throw a stick and hit a great softball team, right? We're surrounded by great athletes. What we're surrounded yep. by, it's a it's a machine of great athletes and coaches. And I think about we're yep. used to this. What we'll people come in from another state and be like, "Wow, you have such talent." It just we're not even yep. thinking about how blessed we are with that. You got these guys like, you know, Mike and all these bands, they're just surrounded by it. So it's normal to them to yeah. be surrounded by yeah. the trades. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Wow. Well, wow. that was awesome. Well, Dane, that was a, a great one. What a great nightcap, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Loved it. Um, I'm trying to get better at not teasing too much, Dane, but tomorrow we have our friend Shantice from the zoo stopping by. Yep. It's going to be fun. We've also got a, a band. Um, imagine that you were transplanted back into 1994. That's kind of their tagline. We've got a band coming on called Deadly Vices. All original song, but they let you know their style of music is very much like into a Stone Temple Pilots or, or Alice in Chains. That's what they market. So for us that love grunge rock, you're going to get a real treat tomorrow night talking to Deadly Vices. Um, and then we'll end the night uh, well, in the the week with our, our friend Chris Lynn on Thursday night, so it's a great week of uh, of music and sports still. Um, but wow, I'm a little little bit uh, amped up after that one dance, and I'm gonna yeah, go do some yeah. laps or something to calm down. You know, <laughs> so go swim in the pool or something. There you go. But, there you go. Um, you guys, I can't say enough thank yous uh, on behalf of Mike and Alien Ant Farm and our fans all around the world. Don't forget, as always, that we love you and Dane. Thank you for listening.